photographers, this is a must-see photography movie in 2021. Right, I've never made a review on a movie, but hey, this is a photography channel and of course I want to share anything that I find interesting and more importantly, photography related with you all. The movie in question is Minamata, star with Johnny Depp. First, may I say that I'm looking at this movie in its entirety and I'm not judging any of the actors in their respective personal lives because you know what happened to Mr. Depp lately and this movie is banned from US release. But I'm fortunate enough to be living in the UK, so I got to see this well, well-rounded, captive and important narrative of one of the best photojournalists of all time. For those who admire photojournalism would definitely know Eugene Smith. He's one of the rare talents in the whole genre of the frontline documentary photography. Smith, who worked for the Life magazine and covered numerous big stories since the World War II. You just have to say that I'm the greatest photographer that Life magazine has ever had. His last coverage and perhaps the most significant photograph was captured in Minamata, Japan. And this very movie is the telling of his last assignment that made him an icon. I'm not here to cover the historic facts of this movie, but the entire script was based on the photo essay book written by Aili Miyoko and Eugene Smith himself. The entire event went global in the 70s via Smith's pictures that were published by Life magazine. One particular photo, captured in 1971 and published the following year, Tomoko and Mother in Bath, became one of the most iconic and considered to be the most powerful image in the 20th century. I've seen a few photography or photography related movies in the past. They are there, but far and few in between. But luckily, unlike normal Hollywood movies, due to their rarity, most usually come out quite good. But Minamata is different in a way that it doesn't feel like a movie. I know you don't understand the word that I'm saying, but that's not going to stop me from talking, so. It's more like a documentary than anything. Just the main characters are played by actors instead of the people themselves. The entire flow of the movie follows the same feel, just without the narration. But that's the power of this movie, well, at least in my opinion. The music was simple, yet very fitting and very Japanese and even the tones are very Japanese-like. And I can't really describe it, but if you watch a lot of Japanese movies or dramas, you'll recognize them. Critically, I love how Johnny Depp portrays Eugene Smith without the exaggerated expressions. You know, for a second there, I thought you and I was gonna be good pals, but I can see now that I was sadly mistaken because you, sir, are f***ing shit which is quite a departure from Captain Sparrow. I also love how the film showcased the relationship between Smith and Miyoko. Use your hands a lot. Caress the image. Put on the crown. Put on the body from your hands. The chemistry between them throughout the entire film without the need to get into the bed scene, which would be a Hollywood disaster. Being a photographer myself, I can't stop by getting intrigued by this version of Eugene Smith. There is a scene where Eugene spoke to Eileen after they found the secret documents about the knowledge on the whole mercury poisoning saga. Eileen was super emotional and being a veteran journalist, he said something that I took it to heart. You cannot let your emotions run the show because you will f***ing lose and sometimes you might f die. Focus on the photograph you want to take. Focus on what you want to say. Do it now. Literally, something that resonates my inner photographer self, and that was epic. However, there are a couple of things I didn't quite agree, and yet again, as a photographer. First, despite the brilliant acting from Johnny Depp, whoever kitted him with the cameras and lenses didn't go as far as actually copying what Eugene used. I'm speaking more specifically to the long zoom lenses that he loved to use. Eugene regularly used a telezoom to catch the candid moments of the people and used primes only in close proximity scenes. And he also liked to carry two to three camera bodies at any one time. 
And most of the photos of Eugene I found were using much longer telezooms than the one he used in the movie. Perhaps I can forgive that, as it's not an important detail that I would say breaking the film's integrity. Aside from the geeky things, I have nothing but praise about this masterful movie, something that I actually enjoy watching without feeling cynical, and let my photographer sell force into Eugene's last assignment in Minamata, and felt the emotion that he felt as he discovered more and more about the truth behind the cover-up of mercury poisoning by the chemical company Chisel. And the icing on the cake would be the relationship between Eugene and the village residents, and of course Eileen herself who married the man later. One thing you must take note is that the photo I mentioned at the beginning of this review, Tomoko and mother in bath, was not fully shown in the movie, due to the wishes of the family who now owns the copyright of the photograph. If you want to see the original picture, the only place you can find is through online archive or some old original photo books. On a wider note, the Minamata poisoning event isn't the only one. There are many other similar cases around the world, but it highlights some important things that are still very much current and relevant, especially environmental issues and global warming. I don't know how close this movie is to the actual event and all the details in between, but I enjoyed it. If you find any of this fascinating, I suggest you look up all the history and images behind Minamata. This movie is a wake-up call to many who forgot about our responsibility to keep the world together but it's also a great portrait of the journey of how these powerful yet disturbing images captured by the master of photojournalism, W. Eugene Smith. Well, I hope you enjoyed this particular review of something that is a little bit unusual from this channel. But like I said, I'm expanding the channel. And I want to include everything about photography. And um, this particular movie is photography related about the master Eugene Smith. And uh, it's fascinating, you know, and uh, I'm going to continue doing maybe a few more reviews on some of the movies that I really enjoy in the past, or maybe some documentaries that may kind of uh, uh, give you more energy and more inspiration to go out and shoot more. So this is kind of like my, uh, uh, my my power to you guys. And hopefully that I can push um, this community forward and be like more successful and more uh, inspirational group of photographers. Uh, I think it's just fantastic, you know. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it though. Uh, if not. Please let me know. At least I don't. I know that I won't do it again. Uh, but if you do, and I will find a few more uh, other uh, really uh, cool movies to review because uh, I have seen quite a few already, as you can imagine. If you are a photography passionate, if you are into photojournalism, if you're into uh, portrait photography, a lot of these uh, uh, genre, you know, like there are many master uh, being kind of captured in film before through either through documentary or re acting, you know, through a Hollywood uh, reinterpretations of the whole kind of uh, a history of photography. So it's, it's all interesting stuff. And uh, uh, some rubbish one, of course, I mean, I've seen some rubbish one. They, they too Hollywood fire the whole thing. And uh, but I don't like those stuff usually. So I tend to like something like this particular one, like the Minamata is uh, is very true to the uh, to the photographer himself or herself or maybe even to the actual events, you know, this is something that I would appreciate more than, you know, too much of the Hollywood thing, you know, like trying to dramatize everything, like too much emotions, too many unnecessary scenes and so forth. Uh, but this is very well done, very well captured. Uh, I think cinematography wise is pretty realistic. You know, I think the way they've done it is really good. Uh, sorry about the spoiler if you haven't seen the movie uh, uh, already, but uh, I try not to leak too much, but Minamata is such a big event. So uh, you have read something already if you're trying to Google the uh, the, the Minamata event, and uh, you know that will have given you basically most of the uh, uh, history behind it anyway. But this movie, what it does well is actually giving you a journey. You know, so you follow Eugene uh, uh, to Japan and actually document and see the entire event himself. Uh, so which is the best part of it, because even if you know the event, knows exactly what happened, um, this is still a very good movie to watch, especially if you are a photographer. So that's it, folks, and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'll see you all next time. Have a good day and keep shooting, of course. Peace.